Welcome back. And I'm in the process of cleaning up the workshop, trying to get ready for some really fun projects. And it was reminded of the fact that I bought this tool a while back. Now this is the Gerber armbar. And I bought it for only one reason, to destroy it. Yes, that's right. I knew before I bought it exactly what I was getting. But before I destroy this tool, before I take it apart and use it for modifying fodder in the future, I would like to talk about why I'm doing it in the first place. So if you're a fan of Gerber, you should leave now. Let's get to it. Okay, so of course this is the Gerber arm bar. Now, the arm bar drive, let me be clear. Now, when it was initially spoiled, I was much more excited about this tool because we had some angles we were missing. We didn't know if the tools locked or didn't lock. And it was like, wow, this could be a really cool entry if they do it well. <laughs> I don't know why I thought Gerber would do something well designed, but this is not one of those items. I am not going to be particularly kind with this review. Now, all of the implements with the exception of the locking blade, which is fine, um, are slip joint and the slip joint has almost no retention at all. It, it basically it, it basically is free floating. So these are free floating implements. It makes particularly no sense when you're talking about a sharp, short object like this one, which could easily collapse on your hand because you are putting direct pressure on the point. Anybody who's gotten cut badly from a Swiss Army knife by using it to drill holes with the blade knows what I'm talking about. Now on top of that, we have a scissor, which when you're when you're when you have a parent company called Fisker, who is one of the best scissor manufacturers probably in the world. How do you come up with this design? The Look at the ratio of blade length to handle length. You might think that to make a good scissor, you need a long blade. No, the truth is you need a certain ratio of pressure. And depending on the thickness of the blade, that's going to change. If you look at a scissor like on the Leatherman Surge, which is done properly, you'll notice that it's a far shorter scissor and it's thicker with a longer arm the way it should be. This scissor, on the other hand, does not cut great. It's okay, but it doesn't cut great. Like if you're cutting at the tip, you don't have enough strength to actually cut with it. You have to get all the way inside. Now, if you look at other Gerber scissors, you'll notice that they are much shorter. They have, they come out to about here and they taper to a point. They have a narrow tip so that you could do fine work. This can't do that either. So the whole thing is just wonky doodle. And the reason I bought this is because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cannibalize this bit driver and put it into a decent tool like a Leatherman. Now I have heard that this has not caused any breakage, which is a good sign. So it's good enough to use as a surrogate tool. Now I got this on discount, I think it was like $29. But the only reason I did is because I'm going to break it down. And I figure why not do that on camera? So we got my Nipex Cobra here. And simply, since I don't care about the screw, I'm gonna use the Cobra instead of the plier wrench. If I was using something like, like a tool that I wanted to keep in good condition, I would use the plier wrench because it would not mar the surface. So, this is a much better tool for that. But because I don't care, I'd rather have more grip. And uh, yeah, I don't care if it eats up at all. The other cool thing is I think, I could be wrong, but I think the um, screw for this may be the same pivot size. Now we're gonna find out, but I think it has the same pivot size as other Gerber tools. But there's no way to know until we take it out. Ah, yes, yes it does. It does indeed. So why is that important? Gerber, like Leatherman, uses a very unusual pivot size. Um, I believe it's 7 30 seconds of an inch, just under a quarter inch, which means that Gerber 
and Leatherman tools, they work together. They both have the same size. Now this may, this may be the smaller of the two, two sizes, which is five thirty seconds of an inch, which is the same as the inner um, pivots on most Leathermans. And that will determine where I can put this, whether it will be inside a frame or on the outside of something like a Leatherman Wave. But yeah, this is it. So we're just taking this bad boy out and um, oh, need a little bit more. Now, of course, right here in the video, something happens to the microphone that shuts it off. It's not really important anyway. What you can see is I'm basically just ripping this thing apart. And I talk a little trash about Gerber and yada, yada, yada. The important thing here is I don't see any tool as a complete loss. There's always an opportunity to utilize the pieces that are good in a tool and potentially integrate them somewhere else that actually matters. And when we start our series on modification, you're going to see a lot of implements from all different types of tools that I will use to integrate into good frames. And this is not a good frame, this Gerber armbar, I just got to say that. I really wish they had put things like a pocket clip and locking implements and maybe improve the scissor a little bit. And then all of a sudden you have a decent tool. But sadly, they didn't do that. They just said, it's good enough, and then they released it, which is probably my biggest pet peeve right now in multi-tools. It's always just good enough. One of these days, a company is going to do the best job they can, and they're going to make all of these bigger brands like Gerber, Sog, and Leatherman. It's going to make them sweat. Now, I'm looking forward to using this bit driver in some tool in the future so stay tuned and don't worry we will be using it very very soon